guys, welcome back to Talking Rangers. We're here for the eighth instalment today with a Q&A with Angel Rangel. Make sure you like and subscribe. And a lot of you are not actually subscribed to the channel, so make sure you go and subscribe down below. Massive thanks to Rangel for joining me today. No further ado, let's get on the phone to Angel. So, thank you very much for joining me today, Angel. How are you keeping? Hi there. Yeah, very well, thank you. You know, we try to keep the routine as much as we can, the same way as if you were in training, if you like. So, you know, try to wake up early, do your usual breakfast, go out for a good run, good training, and then obviously come back home and instead of resting like I would do, I've got home schooling with three kids. So, never, it's never easy, but we're doing well. Good, good. It sounds challenging. I just like you to touch on there. How are you keeping busy? Um, so you're working out a lot. Are you anticipating that phone call to get the season back underway? <laughs> I'm waiting for that call. Yeah, you know, it's it's one of those things. You know, it's a unique it's a unique situation where we have to adapt, and you know, we keep watching the news and see what our prime minister says. Hopefully, things will get better. So all we can do in the meantime is just you know keep yourself fit, keep yourself sane, which is very important. And, you know, and enjoy the rest of the day then with, with your family or doing things that you can enjoy at home or obviously, you know, we can go out a bit more. But, yeah, it's been all right. It's been all right. Good, good. Yeah, I'm sure it's nice to be spending time with your family. You obviously, you've got a busy schedule when playing for the R's. Um, just touching on the season. Um, so, obviously, it was season was obviously gutting to be postponed and obviously for the right reasons. But how were your feelings towards the season? How did you think it was going? I think it's been obviously a bad down season. It's been a bit of a roller coaster. Every time we've been close to the playoffs, then we go into a bad run. That's QPR, I guess. And it's so many clubs like that. But I think it just stopped when I think we got a bit of momentum. You know, getting the win at Preston was just unbelievable with 10 men. And I think the confidence was over the roof. So, you know, we all had that belief after that game. Hey, with 10 men, we just beat the top six contenders. So, away from home. So, we got... We got Good quality here, we've got a good team and I think we can do it. But you know what it's like with championship is about consistency, you know, week in, week out, or even three games a week. But it was going well. It was it was going well. Yeah, no, exactly. It's uh it's obviously gutting for the season to be ended just at the point where we hit a great run of form. Uh, it's heartbreaking, but it'd be interesting to see what happens when the season's resumed. How do you think the season was going for yourself? Um it's been okay. I haven't had a major injury like I did last season, unfortunately. But uh, I've had a couple of niggles which have stopped my obviously consistency in games, you know. But I think overall, it's been okay. I think I, I could have done better. I am obviously always very critical with myself. Always try to help on and off the pitch, you know. I'll try I, I my best, but you know, it's been okay. It's been okay. I think the fact that the team is doing well and you can see we are already on 50 points uh, with mm -hmm. nine games to go. Last season, I think we did 51 in all seasons. So it's been a massive improvement, you know, and uh, it's good to be part of it, you know. Yeah, I think you've been asking yourself, I think you've played really well this season when you, when you have done, as you say, you've had a few little small injuries here and there. But yeah, I think it's been a great season for the team. Obviously, it's been big improvement from last year. And as uh, like I say, it's going to be exciting to see what happens if the season does resume. 100%. I mean, nine games, we don't know when or if, if it will happen, but, you know, all the lads keep in touch in the WhatsApp group, you know, and then we got these Zoom calls on a Wednesday and we all talk about it and we all can't wait to get back, to get back, finish the season because we believe we can do it. Will it happen? I don't know, but it's good that everyone is very keen to go back. 100%. Exactly. I'm sure time will tell. It's exciting. It's exciting. Definitely. Okay, so thanks to everyone for getting all your questions in. We had loads of questions, really appreciate that. The funny thing is you shared it on your Instagram, sorry, Angel, and we had quite a few questions from some Swansea fans. Um, <laughs> some of those were quite funny, I must say. Um, a lot of them were asking you to choose between QPR and Swansea, like who's the best stadium, best fans, atmosphere, all of that. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna make you answer those um, because I don't want you to ruin your legacy at Swansea because I know all of those answers would be in favour of QPR. Um, <laughs> but um, let's get on to some questions from the fans. That's what we're here for. So a question from Alfie Bryant. What made you choose QPR over other clubs that were interested in signing you? Um, I must admit I didn't have many clubs interested in me after leaving Swansea. Believe it or not, after playing almost 200 games in the Premier League, I suppose it was the age of 35. 
clubs were saying I was too old. They didn't really believe I was that fit. And I was very actually very close to go to India. You know, I was training with an Indian team in Spain in a pre-season tour they were doing in Valencia because of a friend of mine was the manager. So he did me a favor in some ways. And it was very desperate times, you know. So and then Mr. McLaren called me saying he's got a very young talented squad and they need a, a few senior players to obviously lead them and guide them moving forward. And as soon as I, I hear it was QPR, you know, I've played against QPR so many times and you know I've been at, at the time blocked to road and uh, the atmosphere was always great, tough place to go. So I thought, oh, it's a fantastic opportunity to be in the championship and, and you know do well. So that was it. I didn't think twice. Lovely. So um, obviously I saw with McLaren signed you on, I think it was a five-month contract till January. And obviously you proved them all wrong. I mean, you played some great performances and then there was a few clubs after yeah. you. What was it that kind of... Yeah, so, yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, it was funny because I actually came here and they didn't give me a contract straight away. They gave me two or three days to train with QPR. Okay. And after a couple of sessions, Mr. McLaren said, I wanted to stay for a week. So, and then after two or three days, they were talking about contracts already. So, it was everything moved very quickly. So, yeah, I just wanted to add that. Very good. So, as I was just touching on, what was it when um, it came to January and QPR offered you a contract, as I know a few other clubs did? What was it that kind of you made you want to stay at QPR? Um, I, I think you have to be grateful in life, you know, and I think QPR gave me that chance that not other clubs did. And uh, yeah, I had obviously agents and clubs and, and people saying, oh, there is better clubs for you. But I said, look, I am in a great changing room, great club, great bunch of fans, you know. I'm enjoying my football here. I was really enjoying it. Why, why change now? At the end of the day, at my age, it's not about going and earn a few more grand. It's about enjoying your football and knowing that you feel important and respected. And I think I... QPR still now ticks all the boxes and is where I want to be. So it was, again, an easy decision. Very good. That's what we like to hear. Um, just moving on to another question, kind of covering that as well, from Harry Coaching. How does, the time, how does your time at QPR compare to other clubs? Is there a good feeling amongst the group? Yes, yes. I mean, as soon as I walked into the changing room, I could see how welcoming every single player was at QPR. Obviously, I was 11 seasons at Swansea and I was always one of those who would welcome all the players, you know, to make them feel, least, you know, settling quickly. So I could see everyone was the same at QPR, not just two or three. So it was very easy from, from, that, from that perspective. So, uh, yeah. And then after that, I've been there, I think, now about 20 months and uh, I've seen a few changes in, in personal and that, but yeah. the actual sense of the club hasn't changed. Very good family club, you know, as I say. The lads are all very down to earth. I've been in changing rooms at Swansea, unfortunately, towards the end of, of, my, of my time where it wasn't about playing for the club. It was about earning money and, and not caring about anything else. So, fortunately, I don't see that at QPR. Everyone has, obviously, a goal, which is to reach the top. And you can see all the young, talented ones want to reach that. And they are very, very willing to learn you know, from, from the older ones. And that's... And that's what I appreciate the most, that they always listen, they always want to learn. And, you know, at the end of the day, you cannot ask for any more. No, exactly. As you say, some of the clubs, like your, the end of your spell at Swansea, you had some bad eggs in the changing room, just like we had at QPR. So, obviously, it's nice to see the club turning around. I'm sure you're a big part of like, the influence you have on the younger players in the squad. Um, just a question from Edward, Edward3185. What's your aim with QPR if the season does resume? Um, my aim is mine or the team's? Um, let's go for oh, both. Let's go for both. Let's say both. Yeah. Mine, my, mine obviously is to finish the season strongly, to play as many games as I can, hopefully nine, but that's always difficult at my age and knowing that we've got very good competition in every position and uh, not to get injured. So all I want is to prove that I want to play for another season. That will always be my goal, play until 38, I'm 37 now, so that would be a great achievement, me personally. And obviously as a team, top 10 would be great, top 6 would be a fantastic achievement. We are going to push for top 6 and see how it goes. That's all, all we can do. Of course, there's only 6 points in it, so uh, who knows? Exactly. So, another question, what was your favourite moment at QPR from Tom Bishop 10? That's, 
obviously, um, I'd say when I scored two goals against Stoke away, oh. that was my first brace as a professional footballer. So to score two, 35, that was quite, quite a moment. And obviously, unfortunately, we didn't win, but it did feel good. Not gonna lie. Yeah, that was a that was a special game that one, and the celebration was spot on as well. <laughs> that was a great game. Um, who is your best mate at the club from GH one hundred and seven? Good question. You know, I've always had some kind of favourite teammates. You know, but QPR is very really difficult to pick one. You know, because we we kind of meet outside football with some. Some different players we like. So sometimes I'll meet with Lee Wallace, Liam Kelly. Sometimes with uh, Naki when we was there with Evs, with Ilya. So we're all, all a good family. Obviously, I do get on well with everyone. But I support Liam Kelly is the one I talk a lot. Conor Masterson as well. But in, in general, everyone. No, it's a, there's a great team morale, as you've seen from the outside, it definitely looks it. It's great to see, obviously, good relationships on and off the pitch. And that's obviously benefiting our performances. So, um, just moving on. Who do you think is the best young up-and-coming player in the squad? So, let's, let's, accuse, let's uh, excuse Eze, because that's an easy answer. That one's from Jonesy Legends 4. Yeah. Okay, so, we've got, I think everyone is a good player, all the young ones. I am not going to mention Brighty because I think he's been doing it now in the Champions League. I, I think he's got 50 plus games in the Champions League yeah. already. So I, I like to say um, Ilias Che. Yeah. Ilias Che is the one that last season just started being a first team player, went on loan to a League Two team, mm. and uh, he did very well. He came back as a different person and, and a different player. And his proof this season has been, he's been great. He could have scored more goals, he knows that. But that's part of the process. And, and I think it's the one I, I can see reaching the top, apart from obviously as, as and I hope others as well. But I think, I think Elias is the one. Yeah, of course. I mean, the, managing the step up from League Two to the Championship has been seamless for him. He's obviously he's taken it in his stride really well. What about some of, the, some of the younger players that aren't quite in the first team? Have you seen any that you may think, you know, he's going he's gonna to have his chance soon? Um. I haven't seen many training with us mm. this season. Um, I like Faisal, the one that plays in midfield. Left okay. footed, short player. I think he's got great technique. Obviously, it's very difficult to judge players when you haven't seen them play as, as, as a professional. They, mm. they only played obviously under 23 games, which they kind of stand out, but we all know the standards are very different. Um, but yeah, who else is there? I think Charlie Owens is the one that, when he recovers from injury, uh, and he has more first team time. I think he's the one that he could be at QPR for many years and be the main guy in front of the back for, you know, he's got great, great quality with both feet. He's very physical. He's got a great understanding of the game. But obviously, unfortunately, he did, he did his knee, I think. Yeah. So obviously, he's been out for a long time. But he's, he's one that I think QPR fans should be excited about because I think in, in the near future, he could be a very important part of the first team. Yeah, I think he had he had a good he played really well in the cup game. Can't remember if it was the FL Cup yeah. or the FA Cup, but and Warburton mm -hmm. said some really good things about him. So like you say, it's going to be exciting to see what, how it unfolds for Owens when he returns from injury. Um, I've got a question from one of your former teammates. I'm going to say his name wrong. I'm all for pronunciation. Uh, Andrea Orlandi. 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 Yeah. Orlandi. Yeah. <laughs> Orlandi. There we go. Um, he said, "Ask him if he broke a toilet in a hotel in Doncaster." <laughs> he messaged me the other day about it. He's he's writing a book, so he wants some kind of different moments like that. He's one of my best mates in football. We spent five five years at Swansea, so yeah, we used to room together. Always lots of banter, laughs, and I remember when he moved into the room before me, and uh, he actually pranked me. Oh god! He pranked me. I went to the toilet and he put so much toilet tissue into the thing. And when I went there, everything got blocked. So I panicked. I didn't know he was in. So obviously, I didn't know what to do. My English wasn't great at the time. I, I didn't want to go to reception. I was embarrassed. I went into the, the closet. I got a hang and I tried to push it down. And then walked, <laughs> laughing. So, yeah. Thanks for that, Andrea. That was good. Oh, so was, God. That's, that's a great story. Yeah. Sounds a great laugh. Who do you room with at QPR? On my own. 
we got the choice. Know. So yeah, on my own. Oh, okay. Very good. Very good. Um, some of the other questions we've got from Liam C4. Who is the slowest at the club? Here or legs wise? <laughs> <laughs> um, if you talk about running, it's probably me. Oh, really? Uh, above four keepers, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll take that. I don't think uh, there is anyone else. No, it's me. You know, at 37, I'll take that. I'll probably run distance wise more than 80% of the squad, but when it comes to speed, I think it's speed by eight. I always say this is the quickest muscle in, the, in, in your body. So I think I'm one of the quickest out there. So I'll exactly. take that. Exactly. Good positional awareness. You don't, need to, you don't need to be the quickest on the pitch. Uh, we've got a question from Ed Saunders. Who has the worst fashion sense in the squad? <laughs> I think um, we've got a few. Uh, a few of them are just always going safety with the night track is on. You know, they don't really try most of them. But I think Dylan, the goalkeeper, Dylan Burns, he actually makes an effort too much. You know, he comes in with some dodgy track so it's very bright you know yellow orange with an ikea bag oh that's <laughs> yeah yeah he looks he thinks he looks cool i think he looks more like a burglar sometimes <laughs> but um i i think it's it 100 yeah dylan sorry mate yeah dom dom Bull said the same so it's uh it's quite funny <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, he talked about his orange tracksuit as well. So uh, he's obviously getting done dirty. <laughs> Who is the best and the worst trainer in the squad? Oof. I, I wouldn't like to say the worst. I think it's disrespectful. Yeah. You know, because I don't think anyone trains badly. You know, you can have some bad days. But um, the best one, um, I think Luke Amos. He's a very, very good professional player. You know, before training, he spends a lot of time in the gym getting ready. Then he goes on the pitch and he always works hard. You know, he's very competitive like me as well. He, he likes to win. We always have a bit of banter because when we play against each other, 99% of the time I win, so I wind him up. And then that 1% he'll come time after time from, from me. But he's only 1%, so I'll take that. But yeah, I think Luke is probably the best trainer. And the worst, sorry, mate, I'm not going to answer that. <laughs> no, that's all right. Fully understandable. Uh, do you do fines in the squad as a as a team? Yes, we do. I'm actually the one in charge. So um, yeah, you know, we we try to keep it as disciplined as we can. I think it's important that people don't don't come late or leave stuff around the place. You know, trying to keep the environment as professional as possible. And uh, yeah. I've got a second job now, which is obviously been a debt collector. So every week I'm chasing people for money and I had to set up an online account. So I I'm, I'm make sure on a Sunday before 10 p.m., the ones that got fine paid the time, if not, it doubles. So oh. it's actually good fun. Who, who yeah, gets fine the most? Who gets fine the most? <laughs> actually, the one that got fine the most was Matt Smith. Oh, okay. He's gone now. He got late a few times coming in. Uh, it's a few. It's a few that obviously forget to do urine tests or, or, or do a few things like that, you know, late for gym. And, but yeah, but I think overall we are okay. We don't get many fines. We are, we are quite disciplined. <laughs> that was good to hear. Good to hear. Um, a question from QPR always. What's the best bit about being a right back? The best bit? Hmm. Um, well, I consider myself a defender first. Uh, so I think keeping a clean sheet is a big thing mm. for me. Uh, in a game, probably what I look at the most is that my winger doesn't beat me many times with the ball or in behind or he doesn't put many crosses in. So when I do my job defensively, I feel good. If obviously then I, I contribute going forward, it's a plus, which is always great. But when you have the likes of Bright in front of you. Probably offensively, what I enjoy the most is finding him, you know, and so he can do his beats or try to get those combinations to obviously free him in a 1v1 situation. But yeah, I think defensively is what, what I enjoy the most at my, at my stage of my career. Like, you know, after this seven now, I think 
I have to focus on them more than actually going up and down like I used to do 10 years ago. So. Oh, very good, very good. Uh, question from Ben Blexley. Who is the best player you've ever had to defend against? Okay. Um, sure, there's quite a few. I think Eden Hazard. I know you guys don't like Chelsea. Obviously, <laughs> I don't like Chelsea either. Good, good. That's uh, the right bit to say. Yeah. On his day, on his day, he was unplayable. You know, he's got both feet, left and right, strong legs, quick. He's pretty intelligent as well. And he can, he can take on players for fun. And I remember at the Stamford Bridge once, I think we lost 4-1. And uh, he actually beat me inside, outside, and then he crossed with a Rabona. So he destroyed me that day. So that stayed with me for the rest of my career until now. But then in the second time we played him in that season at home, I didn't sleep the night before thinking I need to stop him. And, and actually very well. I got very tired. I didn't let him get on the ball once. And I kicked him a couple of times. Just okay. to me and I warned him up a little bit. But yeah, he's, he's definitely one of the best, if not the best, yeah. Yeah, that's an acceptable answer. Obviously, now he's left Chelsea. But uh, <laughs> anyway, we've got a question from Nathan L. On match days, do you have any pre-game rituals to get you pumped up before the game? Um... Not really, not really. I like to watch clips of the opposition players a couple of hours before the game. So our analysis guys send us videos of each individual player of the opposition team. So I like to watch every single one of the focus on the offensive players. And as soon as they see what they can do is what gets me fired up and concentrated. That that's what I have to do to stop them, obviously, hurting us, if you like. So that's probably the way I... Um, I get ready for the games. You know, I do my obviously exercises in the changing room, get myself ready physically, but I think mentally watching those videos is what will get you on your toes straight away. Of course, very good. What about any of the other team at the other of the squad? Do they have any funny pre-game rituals? Most of them like their own headphones on, listen to their own music. You can see them walking around, dancing and doing their own thing. So there is different ones, you know, it's um I suppose you just uh, different ways, isn't it? So, yeah. Of course, yeah, yeah. Uh, question from D underscore, oh, I'm not going to pronounce this right, Crickler, I don't know. Just how important is your experience and knowledge for the younger players in the squad? Um, you know, I think it's important to have senior players, but obviously not just because they've played at the top, like Jeff, myself, Mark Pugh, Lee Wallace, just the fact that we got that football knowledge, understanding of the game. And I think in a game is when you talk more, more than the younger players, you organise, you get everything obviously in place. But it's also the daily basis where in training you try to improve individually and as a team. You know, so when somebody, for example, you know, they get lazy and they don't track a player back, you make sure you tell them because that's, that's obviously hurting the whole team. So you cannot afford to switch off or some kind of positioning where you could have been there to obviously help the team so they don't pass the ball through. You force them wide and then we can all shuffle across together or stuff like that. So I think, I think that comes with experience and being a senior player, all the player, you don't feel shy to say, which obviously younger ones sometimes feel a bit like if I say something, they are going to shout back. But we try to encourage them as well so they can actually open up and and shout at us if they feel they are right. So, because we are not perfect either, we don't want to make mistakes like everybody else. But it's about the communication, is probably the most important thing in football. So, that's the way we try to help. Yeah. Like you say, I'm sure some of, like yourself and some of the older players, have, has been a real big reason for the, the development of some of the younger squad. And it's been, it's been really enjoyable to watch you know, their, them grow and their confidence grow as well in the squad. Like you say, Samuel Eze, Chair. The, the kind of creative players have really flourished this season. Um, mm -hmm. Being an older footballer, would you say you have more to focus on? Uh, you have to focus more on your diet than before. That one's from Harry Thew. As a footballer? Yeah, as, a, as, as you're getting older, you say you have to focus more on your diet. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, I've never had any strict diet. Never in my life up until now. I just feel like coming from obviously a Spain... Uh, my nutrition is pretty good. I like my salads, I like my rices, I like my pastas, I like everything. Obviously, I like a tree now and again, but I think if you work hard in terms of fitness every day, you burn enough calories to then have a nice meal. So 
you know, where as you get older, you do watch a little bit more, but it's not the actual meals. It's probably the snacking, the picking in between hours that you got to be careful with the chocolates and stuff like that. So you try to replace that with, I don't know, boring nuts or, or something like that, but it gets you through the day. So, yeah. That's that's what it is, you know. And and I think it's important not to drink fizzy drinks. I think fizzy drinks are the worst, you know, very addictive and it's very easy to open a can and just drink a coke. So you try to drink as much water as you can and then with the three meals a day, with the amount of work we put in, in the less, should be okay. Yeah. And of course like uh, Mark Pugh as well, he's uh, the foodie footballer. What do you think of some of his cooking? Oh, he's, he's a maestro, isn't he? He's, he's unbelievable. The consistency of, in his cooking, the, the amount of food he eats, but all healthy every day, that's, that's very difficult to do. Yeah. And you can see that in training. He's a, he's a very good guy, you know, another senior player that leads by example. And, uh, you know, the more players you have like that, obviously, you don't want to have players over 35, but it's good to have a few that obviously lead, lead by example and show the younger ones that eating well, drinking well, sleeping well, and doing everything right, you can become a better player or extend your career for longer, if you like. So that's what we try to do. No, very good, very good. Has he brought in anything for you to try? Obviously, he, he thinks a bit of a chef. What is a, what's his best meal? Have you tried anything he's cooked? Uh, I've asked him to, to bring in desserts because they look amazing and they're actually healthy so he brought in a cheesecake once a raspberry i think it was and it was incredible but my favorite one was a lemon drizzle i told Ooh. him and he brought it this day and actually had two slices because it's one of my weaknesses that the lemon drizzle so yes he, he's very good man he's very good he's very good to have him in the squad yeah, i'm sure it is definitely so we've got the last question from harry kinner how's the thought of playing for qpr next season well, the thought is there. It would be fantastic to obviously stay, stay for another year. I'm very well settled in London and the club. You know, I know, I know the fans now. I know the team. They know me as well, so I know what I can give to the team. But it's all about playing for the rest of the season now, get involved as much as I can, and show that I can stay for another season. So time will tell. But yeah, that's my aim. No, I hope so. If it was my decision, you'd be signing on the dotted line. But um, I'm sure we'll see. I'm sure we'll see. So thank you very much for joining me today, Angel. And thanks to everyone for sending you questions. Really sorry we couldn't get them all answered. There was a lot of your, a lot of your questions. All the best for the, next, for the rest of the season, Angel. Hopefully it does resume. Thank you very much, guys, for your questions. And thanks to you, Charlie. It's been a pleasure. Not a problem. Thank you very much, guys. Stay tuned for the next episode. And I'll see you in the next one.